Hey guys, welcome to The Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and as you know, I just spent the past week in Florida visiting all kinds of fish farms and speaking to the seagrass staff as well as the Tampa Bay Aquarium Society. I had a really great time and I got to shoot a lot of footage of a couple of the farms that I wanted to show you. Uh, you saw last week me show you some of the tetra breeding farms for seagrass and this week I wanted to focus on Imperial Tropicals. Now if you've gone to any conventions on the East Coast specifically, you've probably seen their display at events. The owner, Mike Drotty, does an excellent job supporting the hobby and he and his employees, Alex and Jacob, go to a lot of events and they take an entire setup to be able to showcase their fish. They're located in Lakeland, Florida, where they have a 20 acre farm owned by Mike and his family. Uh, I think they've been in business since about 1970 and they have over 160 ponds as well as numerous greenhouses with tons of vats of fish all grown on their farm. But what's interesting about Imperial Tropicals is that they don't just sell to stores or you know, as a larger wholesaler, they will sell directly to the hobbyist. And their focus is really on supplying fish that the hobbyists want. Anyway, I got to spend the day hanging out on the farm. I started out with Mike, but life on a fish farm is a very busy one. He uh, had to fulfill some orders, so his employee, Alex, sort of showed me around, showed me the greenhouses, took me out on the golf cart to look in the ponds. Now, it was pretty cold for Florida anyway that day. I think it was about 50 degrees, so a lot of the fish in the ponds were towards the bottom where it was warmer, but I got to see them cast net to fulfill an order and, you know, just take a look at everything. And I wanted to share that with you guys. Oh, good. Sweet. There you go, yeah. Nice colors. They are nicely colored. And I like the ones with like the white and the red. They look gorgeous. Think you got enough? Yeah. Excellent. Hard as working people in the industry because there's a lot of people that work hard. I don't know if anybody that's as tuned into the hobby is. Well, I was going to say you guys are really very visible as people. Yeah. Within the industry, you know the way you set up your booths at each thing, and yeah. you're always there and interacting, and you know really catering to the yeah. the trends in the hobby. You do a really excellent job. Yeah, we, uh, you know, we learn a lot. You know, like. We don't want to come across as like uh, know it all and you know, like, you know, we're constantly learning. So. And that's what keeps it fun, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's not nearly as much fun for all the work you have to put into it as it is for yeah, it's, others. Uh, it's still, uh, we're still able to keep that passion. Uh, we're, we deal with such a wide variety of fish from like, um, you know, South America, Central America, the uh, Rift Valley African, the, you know, uh, Congo fish, we breed some Congo fish, we breed Asian fish, so we, you know, we dabble with all the different mixes. Had them ready, they went by until they were actually ready for, um, if I could do like 10,000 a week. And whenever they, uh, whenever I was ready, they cut the price on me big time. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. And, uh, and it was the whole farm that was set up that way? Yeah, so we, we did it for about a year, but after we seen it wasn't, um, it wasn't going to be a good um, market, we decided that we want to bring a lot of variety. Um, and try to, uh, so, you know, right now we've got um, the Red Rose Monies. Um, and we've got the lake that they come from, or or whatever, that starts with eight. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we've got the Millennium's going, we've got Dwarf Neon's going, we've got the Axelrodi's going, uh, uh, 
we got about four of the types. Hi, Alex. Hey. I like these pikes. They don't want pellets. Oh, I like Hongslois. And this is like the, I think what they call the Hongslois 2. Is that right? With more red on it. Yeah. The cheek. Pretty yeah. sure. You can see the juveniles are just. Uh, oh, look at that male. Yeah. Dang, boy. Just within the last couple of days. You're sexy. They've been calling up real nice. There's some, um, I could move some of this wood. These log caught hype and sisters, the. Um, oh, look at those suckers. Uh, They're sexy. Yeah, we got. What number is that? This is the 333, but this is the Garupa. Uh, I think uh, Lower Zingu is what they're also called. Right. Uh, Dell, I think, also breeds a strain. Yeah, there are three, 333s? Yeah, 333s. Uh, white lines. Pretty. Sexy, sexy. Mm -hmm. How many rams do you think you raise? Uh, you know, it's 10,000, you know? It's incredible. Uh, I would say uh, this year we're gear, gearing up for hopefully even more than that. Uh, so this is something here that I've always loved the gold nuggets, but they are such a difficult fish to get healthy. But so these have been through um, quarantine now, and they're actually on their they're looking way better. Yeah, they look really good. Yeah. The bellies are nice and round. Yeah, but when they came in, they were in horrible shape. So unfortunately, I would say over half of the gold nuggets brought in from the wild died. Ugh. Um, because of it breaks your heart, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. Because of people bringing them in and straight just selling them quickly. Yep. And if you don't, um, if you don't get them healthy before you, you ship them back out to a customer, they're not going to make it. So um, you know, we um, that's one thing that we work hard on is making sure the fish is healthy before we send it out. They could. They are nice. Yeah, those are nice. All these are such a good size. Yeah. I haven't kept this particular ancestress. Yeah, I like that. First time I like I that a man, spotting. But, well, it doesn't have an L number, uh, which is kind of funny because people say, "Oh, it doesn't have an L number. It must be really, really rare." Well, it just means um, it well, hasn't been <laughs> hasn't been assigned an L number. Well, I mean, the L number is the sign of the ones that are not scientifically, you know, identified. Yet. Right. So this one has been. It might have been identified in the 1800s, but right. somebody's, you know, classified it to where. And then, uh, guys have nice color. Yeah, those are nice. They breed like these breed every like what seven to ten. Days. Yeah. And they're good parents. They are good parents. I think it's. Part. I think it's a great uh, fish for uh, beginners into the hobby. Oh, absolutely. It's hearty, it doesn't get too big. It's pretty. Um, me. Look at them. That's my original breeders there. Right? They're I'm gorgeous. Got another, another generation coming. So, I love their grumpy faces. I don't know if you can see. Yep, them in the back behind the shell. I like those. Those are. They have like a body pattern, almost like a pike, but then more like a goby type yeah. style. Yeah. And they stay small too. They're cute. I like their big old eyeballs. Yeah. They what's their really what's dangerous. their behavior like? Um, they're not aggressive. I haven't seen any aggression out of them. I mean, um, I mean they're kind of like a uh, sand sifter. I was uh, wondering if they were yeah. a sand sifter. They have that appearance. I'm they trying to get that down. They're high that comes in low water. Right. Even this is this is electric blower car. These are our second generation actually. They're pretty good. They're I mean between these and my red eyes. They're so pretty. Yeah, they are. You see those spikes? Yeah. I like their eyes too. I mean, nice fish though. They are a nice yeah. fish. They look like them. They have, um, what's the uh, LBA 33? Oh, those are nice. Yeah. And how many greenhouses are there? There's five operational ones right now. Number one was knocked down in a hurricane a couple years ago. Oh. Uh, we're looking to get it back online, obviously, but it's just time consuming. 200 gallon? 180. 180. Um, I mean, I think all the way full on some of the bigger ones, it might be closer to 200. 
also kind of cool. Um, originally designed as a system that I threw together real quickly. The water's being drawn out of one of the sumps down there, and it was going to be used for um, uh, Jack Dempsey's. And it was being used for Jack Dempsey's for a while, uh, but now the Jack Dempsey's obviously have stopped breeding because of the cold. So now they're out wintering in a pond. Um, now we just use it to kind of grow out for some of uh, the fry or um, here's some just a few dragon blood candy. babies. Um, but we, uh, it's cool seeing in these ponds because when you see in these ponds, you bring in a net of thousands of dragon bloods. Awesome. You know, most of the time you bring in a net if it's like South American living sort. I mean, they're more brown. <laughs> right. So you're like, great. But like these guys, you're like, whoa! You get really excited because you see them. It's like electric to a car when you bring in a pond of them, it's just like insane. They glow. Or even like the Jack Dempsey's because you know how like the jet, the blue gene works with them. And then you get like, you bring a net in, but then like every fifth or sixth fish is a nice bright blue one. So it's kind of cool because it's like a nice speckle. They look great. Parasani. What is that? Is that? Oh, is. That's cool. So yeah, um, I keep a, like a big vat of it over there in case there's any eggs left over when I'm moving grass around and stuff, and then I have to go through and there's. Yeah. It was kind of cool at the aquaculture lab. They were using the cloth pop-up laundry baskets. Mm -hmm. It was neat. I yeah, hadn't seen that before. There's some fun stuff over there because they have the ability to do a lot of experimentation. They were just fun to like themselves. So, all yeah, lots of fry. The most are these guys, the Jordan Neons. Um, I mean, the water's off, so you can actually see that's still like nothing. Like, it's cold, so they're not doing much. Um, you collect the mops every day? Yeah, every other day. Every other day? Good. So I'll pull up the adult, the babies. The babies are absolutely like the boysy. They're gorgeous when they're babies. They're like the, the spots. spots. Yeah. yeah. So they're pretty like chill. They got some they're good, good color. Yeah. They have a good personality. Yeah, so I good. love the little fry. Those spots, man. Like, yeah. I almost wish they would keep them. See, they're already starting to like even lose it at like that size. That's awesome. So Mike gives each of you, or you guys each have like sort of your well, area of strength it's kind of that you focus on. To, well, I mean, me coming into this, I didn't really have a level of strength in terms of like the fish themselves, but I did have base presence skills, and I knew more water parameters, and I knew more of the technical aspects of certain things. So he kind of gave me fish that he felt were harder to breed or harder to work with. Five greenhouses, we all just kind of split up all the workload. We all work together. I mean, I could be in there answering emails to customers. I could be back into the bag. I could see fish. I could be out there, but like deep, deep in mud, getting a tracker on the stuff. Like, how many of you got? How many people do you got have working here? Uh, that was very, not very eloquently said of me. We got uh, uh, like five staff. Hey, Mike, never stop working. He's probably the hardest working person there. I would not doubt it. Fish farmers in general seem to be some of the hardest working people I've ever met in my life. Yep. We found that system kind of works. That's what I do too. You act like you've never been fed. And I can tell from your body condition that is not the case. But ponds that obviously have fish that are a little more scent, uh, temperature sensitive, we cover Covered this plastic. Um, you guys got to cover them late this year, huh? With how warm it yeah, was. Yeah, and even now we're still kind of watching the temperatures on some of the more sensitive stuff, like stuff that's uncovered, and we're like thinking some of them actually might be able to winter fine because like this is kind of like as cold as it gets. Uh, let's see what's. Yeah, we uh, 
I can't get over how many of these he has dug. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a crazy thing. How many of them are there? 170, I think, in total, wow. 170 something. He always has like 160, but on the board, the number goes up to 170. So we have a little like dry erase board that we keep track of every single pond. He's he's pretty tuned in too that he even will be like, you know, oh, you're looking for this fish out that pond 28. And so oh. it's just kind of crazy. Um, how yes. often how often do you have to reset them? It just depends. Like if they're if we're just turning them over, you know, we just wait till they're seller size, which could be three or four months. Some like the live bear ponds, they're just they just stay out here. Trying to see if any, it's kind of. Crazy. Do you guys pump water in warmer water for the ones that are open or not really? I don't know. Let it just dry. I mean, it's, the sun keeps it warm. So like this one's being trapped right now. So you can see gotcha. the, the traps and the trap has like an oatmeal, like fish meal uh, substance that sticks on the front and it's essentially. You know, like a trap, once they go in, they can't come out. It's right. real simple. What do you think is the thing you guys sell the most of? The cichlids, or the live bears, or the rams? In terms of wholesale, it's always been live bears, but cichlid-wise, I would, I mean, it's pretty even across the board of what we sell. I mean, a lot That's of Africans great. obviously go out just because Africans are really high demand. And they do really well down here. Yeah, which is cool because, you know, it's a fish that we don't have to keep indoors. We can, even the in the summer we were growing all those africans outside right all those grow outs in fact a lot of those covered ponds were africans they're just gonna winter out here they're gonna grow up and then we'll probably bring them in once it gets warm Unfortunately, the crap. i think a lot of people think who don't do this job think this is a dream job but i know that it is an incredible amount of work it's a lot of work and then obviously like just the you know what you get out of it but it is it's um, we have a lot of people from clubs and local people that we know, friends and blah, 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 that won't. They're always saying like, oh, we'll come out and help, blah, blah. And they show it's up like, yeah, and it's well, dirty. No, and well, <laughs> they, they show up and they work hard and they they do a good job and they enjoy it. But, um, you know, we always, when we start talking, I'm like, you know, it's something you realize you got to do 40 hours a week. Every, you know. Only 40? I'm surprised. Um, but for people like Mike, you know, this is damn, this is his yard. Right. He's never not working. I know how that is. Do you drain them down, clean them out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the process usually is, you know, we drain them down to about a quarter level and then we'll get in with a big, like, big seine net, which is, it's actually over by the pump, otherwise I'll just show it to you for shits and giggles. Um, that's a clean pond, nothing in it. Clean that one out. But then once we get all the stuff drained down, uh, you know, we just get all the fish out. Once we know we get all the fish out, that's when we drain it all the way down with the big pump. And then we bring in a smaller uh, gasoline pump, like a, uh, a little like Honda, like, right. you know, outboard or whatever. And then that's like a f attached to a fire hose. And one of us literally, one of us gets on the big pump to like watch suck the it flow. Out. And then one person gets down there. And then some of these live bear ponds are, you know, two, three years old. I mean, I've been sinking up to my knees and that oh, stuff. Oh, gross. So it gets pretty disgusting. Do you reseed them with like cotton seed or whatever? Uh, they have in the past, but ever since I've been here, they have not. So you have a dirty, <clears throat> dirty job. Well, yeah, just it's over who's able bodied to do a very physically demanded job, and especially, you know, the heat index in the field. I would die. Come, come July and August, is 150, 120 degrees out here. I would die. So I'm literally, you know, down in there. And once you get down below the, the ground level, there's no wind. Oh boy. So. Heat stroke. It's surprisingly not bad. I actually like I weathered it really well. Like I didn't have any time when I was like dying from heat. <laughs> the cool thing is, um, like we actually come summertime, we actually sell a decent amount of gambusia, you know, mosquito right, fish. Right, which are in these trenches. And huh? Jacob has like a weird affinity. He likes to come out here and trap them himself. <laughs> so you'll see Jacob having in summer and is out here like <laughs> trapping gambusia. <laughs> Surprise! There's not more duckweed in all the ponds. Oh, he treats them. Oh, okay. There's a gator that's it's usually right in this area. But say how cold it is, he's either super Down, deep in the water asleep right. or he's out basking, so we might get to see him. I'm gonna turn down this way. That road, see how shitty that road is? Yeah. Get stuff there all the time. Especially with rain. I'm gonna sure put you on the side of the gator. <laughs> Great! Actually, they're so skittish, they're, they literally are no threat. Like, the only time you get it to be a problem is when people start feeding them. Thanks for watching. Make sure you stop by my Facebook page as well as my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. I hope you enjoyed this peek into fish farming.